Think of the great minds and great businessmen of our age. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk. Each of these men started with an idea and applied the resources they had available to them to make that idea a reality. They made millions of dollars and dominated their industries. They are known as the big businessmen of our time. But before them, there were the original captains of industry in the age of big business. The age of big business was a period that saw the creation of American mega businesses, labor unions, corporate corruption, and federal regulation of business in America. This time period in American history defined the idea of American success through self-reliance, a hard work ethic, and individual responsibility. It set up a foundation for which sprang the modern American corporate infrastructure and the urban workforce we have today. Because of this era, big corporations rule industries and American working families move to the cities to work for those companies. It also forever altered the American socioeconomic hierarchy. After this era, classes were divided between an upper class, middle class, working class, and working poor. The businessmen of the Gilded Age depended on hard work, innovation and adaptability, and shrewd decision making. Let's take a look at a few of these tycoons of big business. First, we have Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie was a penniless Scottish immigrant who made his fortune by starting the Carnegie Steel Company. Carnegie had perfected the idea of vertical integration, where he would buy out and control all his suppliers in order to control all areas of production in order to reduce his costs. The next idea is horizontal consolidation. This technique involves buying out his competitors and absorbing all of their production in order to grow his company. The next big businessman of the era was J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan was a banker who had a vast fortune of money at his back. With this fortune, he created the company U.S. Steel. J.P. Morgan's U.S. Steel was a holding company, which is a company created only to buy out the stocks of competing companies. He used the vast amount of money at his disposal to slowly take control of his competitors. Essentially, J.P. Morgan did not know much about making steel, but only intended to buy out his competitors in order to monopolize the steel industry. This is why the holding company is illegal. However, by 1901, J.P. Morgan had enough capital to buy out Carnegie Steel. And by that time, Morgan's U.S. Steel made over 80% of the steel in America. The next businessman, John D. Rockefeller. Rockefeller founded the company Standard Oil. Rockefeller ran the Standard Oil as a trust, where he broke his company up into many smaller companies in order to separate the stock. This would help him avoid a hostile takeover so no one could ever dominate his company. Due to his business practices, running a company as a trust is now illegal. Due to his shrewd business practices, Rockefeller controlled 90% of the oil production in America, creating a monopoly. The final businessman of the age that we will talk about is Cornelius Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt was a railroad monopolist who gained control of railroads in the United States by buying out his competitors. He would first drive down the price of the competitor's stock and then accumulate all the stock with his vast fortune, leaving his companies the only companies left in the railroad industry. The practice of driving down the price of stock of your competitors and purchasing that stock, gaining control of their company, is what's known as a hostile takeover. Cornelius Vanderbilt perfected the practice. These businessmen credited their success and dominance on the idea of social Darwinism. Social Darwinism is based on survival of the fittest, it's the idea that, fueled by big business, competition in the market leads to natural selection for firms. The best survive and dominate, the worst go bankrupt and die off. In order to work properly, outside influences must keep out, meaning government should stay out of business and allow them to compete with no regulation. In this political cartoon of the era, you can see the idea of social Darwinism visualized in J.D. Morgan's Standard Oil Company. Morgan stands at the base of a beautiful rose which is his company, Standard Oil. Beneath his feet are the petals that have been trimmed from the rose, which are his competitors. It says, the American beauty rose can be produced in all its splendor, only by sacrificing the early buds that grow up around it. Those early buds were the competitors that Morgan had to beat out in order to become a monopoly in the oil industry. However, for all their successes, these big businessmen also faced criticism by many people in America. As a result, they gained the term the robber barons. 
Robber barons was a derogatory term given to big businessmen that harked back to the ruthless feudal lords of the Middle Ages in Europe. By this time in the American economy, so much was controlled by so few. And Americans began to distrust big business. They began to criticize corporate greed and the corruption that corporate money can play in politics. These robber barons hiked prices, cut wages, and kept the profits for themselves. In an attempt to repair their image, the robber barons donated millions to charity. Fun fact, have you heard of Rockefeller Center, Carnegie Hall, or Vanderbilt University? All of these are named after robber barons who donated money towards their construction in order to help future generations. The growing number of illegal monopolies and trusts and public outrage over corporate corruption led to tighter government regulation of big business. The main instrument of that regulation was the Sherman Antitrust Act. This law declared that all trusts were illegal in the marketplace. However, it was nearly impossible to enforce. The Sherman Antitrust Act didn't clearly define a trust. Companies got around the law by dissolving their trusts and creating monopolies in order to keep control of the market. The Supreme Court refused to enforce the law and threw out any cases brought before them. Why does this matter? Today, we revere the big businessmen of our era and American innovators as titans of our time, and we look up to them for inspiration. It wasn't until the Gilded Age that Americans revered big businessmen as heroes. The era of big business also created the socioeconomic hierarchy of today, with the different classes according to income. The corporate infrastructure developed during the Gilded Age led to a century of American economic dominance. It paved the way for the economic success of the 20th century. The last reason this is important is because the U.S. government still uses the Sherman Antitrust Act to sue companies today. In 1998, the United States government sued Microsoft for monopolizing the internet browser industry. Microsoft made it impossible to run any internet browser besides Internet Explorer on Windows. The United States government won, forcing Microsoft to allow its competitors to run on Windows, leveling the competition in the industry.